Xylandoscopy has revolutionized the way we manage salivary gland problems. This animation will illustrate the role of silendoscopy in managing submandibular gland stones. So the first thing we need to realize is that your submandibular gland is producing saliva that has enzymes that aid in digesting your food and preventing you from having uh, excessive dental disease constantly throughout the day. And when you look at this diagram of the person chewing, you can see that as soon as you begin to chew, it activates the gland to produce saliva, which is uh, shown here by the, the blue vesicles moving through the duct. It's quite normal that you have minerals within your saliva, such as calcium, which are depicted by the small yellow sort of granules that you see uh, intermixing with the blue uh, droplets of saliva. At some point in time, the way the stone is formed is these calcium deposits sort of coalesce and find each other. Uh, and once they find each other, they form a stone that is large enough to block and obstruct the normal flow of saliva through the duct. Once that happens, the saliva has no option but to go backwards into the gland, which causes the gland to swell and become very inflamed. When you look at yourself externally, you actually see this very large, swollen, and tender area under your jawbone, which we know is an obstructed submandibular gland. Now, some of us have looked under our tongue and we see there's a small opening where saliva sometimes will squirt out. That's the opening to the duct. We use a very small fiber optic scope to go into that opening and to go into the duct to see what's going on. So here we see the stone that's blocking that saliva. We open and deploy a basket, we grab the stone, and we pull it backwards out of the duct and out through the natural opening. This requires no incisions. It's a very natural process, and the saliva is able to discharge itself through the normal opening under the tongue. As that occurs, the backup of saliva in the gland is able to, to egress out, which causes the gland to reduce in size and go back to a normal size, therefore removing the pain that was associated with the inflamed gland before. Once that saliva flow has been reestablished, you'll see that the contour of the jawline is normal again, the pain has gone away, and essentially you have had a successful silendoscopy of the submandibular gland. Silendoscopy allows you to avoid removing the submandibular gland as a whole. And removing the submandibular gland as a whole puts the marginal mandibular nerve at risk of being injured. This is the nerve that moves your lower lip. If you were to attempt to remove that gland and injured that nerve, you would have a crooked smile, which you see here. And therefore, you also have to consider you would have an external incision in your neck, which sometimes can leave a very unsightly scar. In short, silendoscopy allows you to avoid any external scars, any dents, and more importantly, any paralysis of your lower lip. Submandibular silendoscopy is an excellent procedure. It's outpatient, it's painless, there's no external incisions. You're able to avoid any risk of facial nerve paralysis. You're able to preserve your salivary gland. That's important. People completely underrate the value of a submandibular gland. That saliva contains antibodies that help fight infections. It's what allows you to share drinks between people and not get sick. It also has enzymes that digest sugars off of your teeth, which keep you from getting cavities. And the obvious, it helps you to swallow and digest your food. So the opportunity to save a salivary gland is a significant one. And given the opportunity, you should take it. If you have any more questions about silendoscopy, please reach out to us and contact us. We'll be happy to discuss it with you further.